Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Rupan the Third, part four, episode number one and two reactions. Okay, we are finally here. Uh, uh, this is season four. This is the first two episodes of season four. Um, I loved all the previous prequels, uh, the movies that I watched. Rupan was a fantastic journey, and uh, here onwards, I've heard it gets even better. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to the new um, animations. This is, I think this has come out in 2015. Uh, so the animations will be huge. There'll be a huge improvement in the animation and the visuals. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, the story itself, I'm looking forward to a more continuous story. Uh, unlike the episodic uh, story was also nice. But I feel like, you know, whenever like animes kind of do the story a lot more continuously, it, it gets so much better. And uh, I'm pretty sure that will happen here as well. So yeah, like you know, this, this kind of gives a lot more character development in the different characters that we watch. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. So let's see what happens. And uh, this is the first two episodes of Rupan the Third season four. So yeah, let's get started. So I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here, sync it whichever is your preference and let's start. Alright, here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. What? Oh, I remember this quote in one of the movies. Oldest kingdoms. Okay. All right, Zenigata is here. Dear. Yeah. What? What did you? Wedding invitation. What? Wait. What's happening? Who is this? Wait, what? Oh my god, I... Oh, this is the opening, let's hear it. Oh, this is very stylish, the way they did this. Oh my god, look at this. Wow, the visuals are so cool. Oh, I love this. This animation looks so fantastic. I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to have a great time with this. I think Fujiko's voice actor changes here. I think it's um. What's her name? Miyuki Sawashiro, I think? Or is it someone else? I think it's Miyuki Sawashiro, isn't it? I'll have to check it out. After this ends, if I remember, I'll check out who Fujiko's voice actor is. Because I've, I remember it changing. Ah. Zenigata is also there. Lupan is mad. Okay. I'm pretty sure something. Oh my god. Wait, they really are getting. <laughs> Zenigata is here. <laughs> Stop this marriage. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. <coughs> I also think. What what the hell? Damn! Oh my god. The first time I'm seeing Zenigata being restrained. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay.
all right so <laughs> fried potato <laughs> it's like what the hell Hmm. So what is happening here? Who is this girl? Wait, she's in the mafia? Oh no, no, never mind. Stylish singer. Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tonight I'll come and kidnap. <laughs> what okay so yeah it's Miyuki Sawashiro isn't it the voice actor yeah <laughs> oh my god I feel like there's something going on in the background oh my god yeah right <laughs> e What? <laughs> okay. What? Fifty? Oh my god. Wow. Is she watching her own? Oh my. She's watching her own. Okay. What? <laughs> Private? What? Damn, that looks cool. Tower ceremony. <laughs> well, Ruban is also pretty famous, so Face? What? Wait. I I don't trust this girl. Wait, what? Oh, the subtitles are a little bit, little bit different. <laughs> but I can understand. <laughs> oh lord oh my god zenigata <laughs> oh.
पैट्रिक कैप्टन पैट्रिक ओ माई गॉड वट इज वे वॉट वेट वेट मेट भाउ वेट रियली ओके दे गो That's why Jigen was. Oh my God. Jigen knew everything. That's why. Okay. <laughs> yeah. San Marino's national treasure. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's why. Only people that are around. nine bosses and the closest one. Wait, why was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's not wrong. Okay, so that's what's going on. <laughs> well, He's Lupin specialist. <laughs> But I don't understand. Why did he let give the letter before getting married? Like the plan was when they're going to get married, the crown would be there. So why did he send the letter before that? Wait, he doesn't know. Oh no! Did Fujiko send the letter? No, wait, wait. What's happening? They don't know about this. Oh, um, I was thinking, why did they send the letter before? I feel like it's Fujiko who did this. I don't know. M maybe I'm wrong. What? Who is this Leonello? Some random guy took it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> ah. Ah, all the clothes are gone. Uh, are are that okay? The subtitles. Okay, I need to find something with the better subtitles. But who is it? Is it Fujiko? Or or maybe? No no no. Wait wait wait. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Anyway. There you go. Oh. <laughs> ah, he's here as well. Oh. Oh no 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 no. Oh no. Oh my god. All right. Perfect. Okay, grab it. Go on.
Is that going? No, do one. There, there you go. Yeah. Run. Oh, what the? <laughs> Throw away the key. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, here we go. I'm pretty sure she herself is capable enough to get out of this situation. She just have to do, does, has to do that, doesn't she? Um. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I'm surprised. Zingat actually went and tried to grab it instead of going for, for Rupan. It's, it's probably a fake or something, I don't know. Or maybe not. Oh my god, it's a fake or something, I feel like. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Wait... Um... Okay... I don't know, like, in this anime, I, tr I, I don't trust anyone. Yeah... Oh, it's him! Ah... Uh, okay... Okay. Oh my god. Ah. Okay, who is it? Oh. Wait, then who is that? Oh, it's Rebecca. Okay. Wait, she's a thief as well? <laughs> she drunk, okay. Wait, then why? What? Oh, wow. Okay, she's one of those. She's one of those. Okay. <laughs> what? Yo. Hmm. Okay. Wow. All right. Okay, okay. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Oh my god. Wait, wait, what? Oh my god, this girl is crazy. She's going to jump. That's what she's doing. <laughs> oh my god. What? Wait. <laughs> 
Oh no, what is that? Yo, it's the, the thing that she said. The plane or whatever. Wait, does her butler also know? I feel like her butler is also someone who... Who's... Otherwise, who's... Uh, piloting the... Great. Oh my god. Move! It's gonna drop on your head. Yeah. <laughs> oh lord. Oh my god, is it... Great. There you go, I knew it. Yeah. All right. This is just uh, the adrenaline seeking. What? What wedding gift? What gift did she? Oh my god. What gift? What did she give? I, did I forget? Alright, I think I forgot. Oh lord. Run! <laughs> Oh no. Wait, what? <laughs> Who? Who is this? What? Okay. Is is that Fujiko? That's Fujiko's voice. What? That's, that's an interesting ending. Damn! Wow, Fujiko looks so different here with her hairstyle. Uh, at the end. Yep. Wow, okay, so that's an interesting uh, start to this. Okay, one thing I need to check before I forget. Uh, Fujiko's voice actor, just a sec. Uh, I think it changed from here, or, or was it before? It's probably Miyuki Sawashiro, as far as I can remember. Um, oh, oh. Just a sec, all right, uh, here we are. Uh, there you go, Sawashiro Miyuki, I knew it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, pretty uh, well-versed with Miyuki Sawashiro's voice because and there's quite a few shows and all that, yeah, that I, I really, for example, I think uh, Daki's voice actor from Demon Slayer is also Miki Sawashiro, yeah, and uh, all that. So, yeah, okay. Um, now, this episode, just a sec, oh my. All right, this episode, it starts with... <coughs> <laughs> Rupan getting married. <laughs> oh no. And um, 
he has sent the letter to Zenigata and everyone and uh, now as soon as I saw this was happening I was like all right something must be going on he's probably planning to like you know rob something or like you know like something he's he's planning like this is not as easy as it uh, like you know as 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 uh normal as it seems like you know there's something going on behind the scenes and uh, we can see like everyone's there nobody knew about what was happening here if it's like you know like whether this marriage was real or was it like a fake ploy by rupan only jigen knew yeah jigen knew and uh, that's why he was kind of quiet and uh, did not like you know and since goemon usually like you know just expresses everything on his face uh, he did not tell uh, Zenig, uh, goemon about it so now we meet a new character here rebecca rebecca what was her title rosalini or, or something like that uh, anyways um so yeah we meet rebecca and uh, she is the person or the bride here and uh, uh we see <laughs> zenigata coming in <laughs> that scene was <laughs> fantastic he just he opens the door and he's like stop this mat <laughs> oh my god that was funny and uh, rebecca's like wait who is this your boyfriend <laughs> oh no Oh god and this is the first time i see that zenigata going somewhere and someone actually restraining him from capturing rupan which is usually the reverse most of the time like people try to restrain rupan while zenigata tries to capture him but this was the reverse here <laughs> but yeah that was kind of funny and uh, yeah they he gets arrested now they exchange rings and all and then they are like in the like you know, eating in the dining hall and they're eating and everything so here okay uh one thing um now here's one thing the subtitles were a little you know wrong i would say you know it was not the complete translation like, you know, like the proper translation of what they were saying there was a few uh parts that they kind of changed in the subtitles i could see uh but i had no problem understanding it because as i said like you know like small like you know here like you know little japanese i kind of am able to understand uh from watching anime for so long so i i did not have much uh, like you know problems in uh while i was because i was listening as well listening and watching the subtitles i could actually guess the parts which the subtitles were wrong a little bit so it, it was not a problem for me but i will however try to find some better sub. if you guys know like some better subtitles or something like you know, let me know uh, uh but i'll try from the next uh video onwards to get a better subtitles uh but anyways um so yeah here we see uh them in the dining hall like you know eating and <laughs> rebecca was like ah i i don't like these things you know like just just stop the piano that's playing there and also like you know bring me some uh <laughs> french fries and uh, which which kind of shows a lot about her personality she's like this type of a carefree type of a person who likes like you know who uh very much uh likes freedom like she she's that type of a girl she is someone who likes freedom and uh, like you know stuff like this are something that probably she she does not like and since she's like the uh they say that she's the head of rosellini holdings which owns the biggest hotel chain in italy you know uh, i'm pretty sure she has a lot of restrictions in her life and that is probably why she is so like you know like she wants and she craves freedom so much um and from the looks of it i think i think what do you call them i think adrenaline junkies let me check double check i think that's what you call these type of people don't you like you know who uh, like you know likes thrill and adrenaline junkies term used to describe a person who feels a compulsion to take part in exciting dangerous and intense activities there you go so she's like an adrenaline junkie um which we get to know in the by the end of this episode uh and uh now i from the okay i'll talk about the end of the episode later for, but from the final like you know scene i can kind of guess she probably has something in her some type of problem in her life or something some kind of backstory which is why she made that face in the end uh and which is probably why she actually craves these type of exciting situations probably something in her past happened but anyways 
Um, so we get an information about she's famous for her flirts with politicians, famous athletes, this and that. And uh, she's always on the headlines and everything. And, um, you know, that's that's who she is. Um, so, <clears throat> like, every, like, Goemon, Jigen and uh, Fujiko is there. And uh, here we get also uh, get to know what happened like you know jigen actually narrates the story of what happened and why did lupin suddenly decide to marry her and the story as it goes you know, as it goes because that was not originally lupin's plan is lupin met her and uh, in, in some party i think and just sent a letter like you know just handed her a letter that i'm going to steal you or something i will kidnap you yeah there you go <laughs> lupin third and that's probably what made her like him and yeah they decided to get married Okay, wait a minute. Uh, in the end, Fujiko was talking about marriage gift. I'm I'm trying to find like you know what, if they mentioned something about that here, but I don't see anything here. Okay, here he says, "I already gave you a substantial wedding gift. Is that not enough?" So, okay, we don't know what the marriage gift was. She was off, like, she was just talking about the marriage gift for quite a long time in the end. So I'm guessing that's some kind of an important thing in the plot or something. Because otherwise, why would she stress that so much? But I don't know. Um, yeah, anyways, never mind. Uh, so. <laughs> now, they're asking, like, what are you planning to do, Rupan, after this? And Rupan's like, oh, I'll just retire, you know, like, maybe, like you know, make a, a tent to a garden and all, you know, behind <laughs> our house. And I'll just spend my life, uh, like, in a retired life. <laughs> so, obviously, Goemon is pissed off. Goemon's like, what the hell, like, and I'm, I'm going. Uh, Fujiko just leaves as well. And here, <laughs> Jigen also leaves, and Rupan's like, Jigen. And Jigen kind of stops a little bit, and then she, he goes, which... Makes sense because he knew about the plan, what was happening. And uh, now here's the thing. They go out and Jigen is like, why are you here, Fujiko? You know, like, uh, don't tell me that you are, like, you know, jealous. And Fujiko's like, like, huh, like, you know, uh, what about you? Why are you here? And Jigen is kind of shuts down, which makes so much sense after the end because we can see that Jigen knew the plan. Jigen was trying to act as if he was oblivious. And I feel like Fujiko also probably realized something along this, like, you know, the, what was happening. So that's why she asked him like that, like, so why are you here as well? So, Jigen knew everything, Fujiko suspected something, while Goemon was completely oblivious. That was the whole situation. And <laughs> Fujiko goes away. And uh, yeah, it's now the scene changes and we see Rebecca and uh, Rupan and they're like, you know, in, in their house and she was talking about how these like, you know, she had some vintage wine, this and that. The house was very big. She was talking about her plan after this, like, you know, like the honeymoon plan or whatever, like, you know, like a, a plane, a private jet, which was designed for her. And the, the jet looked really cool, I have to say. That's a really cool design. Um, but... Yeah, she's talking about how they'll, like, you know, after the ceremony, uh, they'll fly on this plane, and, uh, yeah, they were talking about all of that. And I, I loved how, <laughs> while they were talking in the television, <laughs> there was, like, commercials and everything going on, or, not commercials, but I don't know what that was, but, like, you know, Rebecca's, like, you know, like, hunting and, like, doing gym, gymnastics and all, all those things were being shown. So... Um, Okay, now, here, as always, Rupan Stai tries to do his thing, <laughs> but the butler comes in, the butler is like, oh, tomorrow is a, like, you know, like, you know, like, it will be an early day, so you should go to sleep, this and that, and, uh, yeah, so that was that, so from here onwards, like, you know, things start to, like, you know, like, you know, go in a different direction, um, Zenigata is, <laughs> is confined, and the guy, the, the guard, his name was Patrick, I think. Yeah. And uh, he gets informed that someone sent a letter, a, like, not a letter, but a calling card. And uh, the morning at seven, I'll steal the crown of liberty, signed Lupin. And uh, now here, 
it did like you know kind of made me feel a little bit odd because what was happening here was basically that we see after that we get to know about rupan's original intentions uh he contacts jigen and like you know kind of i, I guess kind of put something in the drink uh, rebecca went to sleep which i don't know it Rebecca might have faked her sleep over there i think that was probably what happened she probably faked her sleep but anyways um uh, rupan came out and co contacted jigen uh jigen was like oh fujiko's being suspicious so and then we see goemon was also there goemon was like what the hell why didn't you tell me <laughs> jigen is like your face would actually like you know actually express all of that like you know we, we like you know like for you you know we we decided to keep it to ourselves because otherwise you know like everyone would realize what the plan is because you cannot keep things to yourself or something like that he says uh no he says like okay wait a minute like your face would Bringing a friend who was seriously congratulating him for your marriage. <laughs> yeah, hiding things. Okay. So yeah, that's basically it. And since Fujiko was there as well, you know, they kept it from Goemon because as they say, like, you know, Goemon's face would have given the whole thing away. <laughs> and Fujiko's a clever person. So yeah. Now, here's the thing. Um, the plan is uh, getting hold of the treasure the what's the name the crown the royal crown of liberty san marino's national treasure and uh, so the only ones that know where it is located are the leaders of the nine administrators uh, stations also known as the nine castles uh, crown is worn on the day day of the marriage by the bride of one of the families okay bride of the one of the families okay and with this right they celebrate the beginning of the couple's married life the only people, here's the thing, the only people that are allowed at the ceremony are the nine bosses and the closest relatives. Now, here's one thing that kind of, I feel a little bit odd. They show a picture over here, where there's like a person and like a lady, both are getting married. I'm guessing the lady has the crown on her head. Okay, nine bosses, closest relatives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So... Rebecca is one of the bosses. Like, like I, I guess she is one of the bosses of the, 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 the hotel chain or whatever they said, I think. And so that's why she is, you know, in the picture, we can see Rebecca here. And as they say, there's nine bosses. Counting all of them, I can see there's nine people here. So Rebecca, Rebecca is also one of them. That means Rebecca knew where the crown would be because she's one of the bosses okay i think so um so all right so that was that and uh now okay let me see yeah the boss is one two three four five six seven eight yep rebecca is one of them isn't she like after that the scene where we see uh jigen uh, not jigen sorry uh, zenigata coming and like you know the crown was there I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight people here, and one of them, you know, there should be nine. So one of them is Rebecca. But anyways, um, so yeah, uh, Zenigata is like, oh, I very much know Rupan's every moves and all. Like this is how he works. So <laughs> it's like, all right, like you know, like I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on this. And while they were saying all of that, Rupan was looking at the whole scene now here's where it really struck me odd i'm like if they really wanted to get to the uh, crown uh the crown couldn't be get unless and until they get married and like you know the bride wears it so why the hell did rupan actually send a calling card before that happened so i was like did fujiko actually trick them you know fujiko tricked them and did that so that the like you know they get diverted the attention gets diverted at rupan while fujiko was going to run away with the crown i thought that was what was happening which kind of happened but it was not the complete truth so basically um obviously rupan was surprised rupan was like what i didn't send any message and uh <laughs> zenigata was like oh no i'm gonna get you and 
he goes to him tries to get him while the crown is gone and someone's one of the bosses took it for safekeeping and you know there was like that the whole chase scene happened and uh, <laughs> goemon stopped senigata and uh, here they were uh, lupin is like so what happened you know who tricked me and in the next scene now you know what here's the thing um this scene is kind of interesting because he says like how brave using me as a puppet but i won't let this pass so easily and suddenly after that they show that fujiko is taking off the mask now this is an interesting scene because they made it seem at that moment that Fujiko, like you know, Rupan was, we, we thought, at, I, at least I thought that F Rupan was talking about Fujiko at that moment. It was not Fujiko she was talking about. It was actually Rebecca. He was talking about how Rebecca fooled him. But since after that scene, we see Fujiko taking off the mask, I was like, oh wait, so yeah, it was Fujiko who tricked them. <laughs> so that, that was like the way they did it was kind of interesting. So basically fujiko probably found her opportunity at that moment grabbed the crown and was trying to get away with it but yeah zenigata and all of them comes uh, like another you know, patrick comes in uh rupan is also there rupan tries to get the uh, crown but fujiko runs away not runs but goes gets on a motorcycle and goes away uh <laughs> but by the end of it jigen shoots the uh, tires uh, fujiko falls down rupan gets the crown <laughs> that rhymed <laughs> okay um and uh yeah fuji has been captured by patrick now here's the interesting thing this patrick is actually rebecca isn't it yeah that patrick was rebecca i think now so fuji <laughs> fuji was like lupan please help me and <laughs> Rupan's like, alright, fine. Throws the whole thing and goes away. Um, Jigen and uh, Patrick, or I'm guessing Rebecca in this case, catches it and... Uh, yeah, they take the crown, go to the bosses, and they're like, alright, so here we are, we have the crown with us. And Jigen and Zengata's like, Patrick did such a great job. Patrick is like, alright, you can give it to me for safekeeping, I'm going to keep it with me. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, you know, this guy is, is a good one. You know, he, he was able to actually help me out in this whole situation. So he's fairly capable. So yeah, like, you know, give it to him. <laughs> and they give it to him and he goes away. And then we see uh, the revelation, um, which it took me a while to actually understand what was happening. I thought Patrick really was the one who tricked them. But it was not Patrick, but it was actually Rebecca in disguise. So the actual Patrick is not at fault here. He's, he's just a normal police officer or a guard. <laughs> he, he was just being used up until now. Like not up until now, but at least in this point, because Rebecca took like, you know, his disguise. And uh, Rupan is there. Rupan is like, ah, oh, like, and I finally found you. You tricked me very good. And uh, the original Patrick comes in. He actually tells the situation. Like, this is what happened and uh, that was a fake patrick and yeah the revelation comes in it was rebecca <laughs> and rupan was able to get uh, who she was from the smell of the vintage wine and uh, yeah so she she's like she starts like you know just running away and all and uh, she talks about what she only cares about is adrenaline so basically an adrenaline junkie she likes these type of things these type of crazy situations and that's also why she says that she is always in front of the like you know the the headlines and all like that also gives her adrenaline like a rush of adrenaline and she likes it and uh, she saw rupan and she saw this as an opportunity to like you know like like you know to get more excitement and adrenaline out of it so that's why she agreed to get married to him. She she knew from the beginning that something like this was going to happen. So, <laughs> so he she jumps on top of a, a, a thing, a building, a tower or whatever. And Lupan is also there, and she's like, "All right, like you know, you know what? Like you know, the only thing that I care about is uh, adrenaline. 
you know and that's why uh, she's like she says like the main top i always make myself the main topic of chit chats to end up in the gossip magazines just to satisfy the adrenaline needs and she's like since that is all that i care about this you can have it throws the whole thing to uh, rupan and takes off the gloves or the 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 thing that she uses to you know and uh, she jumps off now i don't know what the hell she planned here she probably th took a gamble here again that's also something that's going to pump up her adrenaline taking gambles she took a gamble here that ruban is going to save her or somehow she was going to get saved by the jet plane but she just took a gamble and that was the adrenaline rush that she needed she jumped and as she real like you know saw like rupan jumped as well now here's one thing that i need to check what happened to the crown so the crown is still with rupan i can see that he grabs um rebecca and she he's like i'll have you know i'm still mad at you for using my name <laughs> she's like my name is also rupan Rupan's like what? And she's like, yeah, I'm like my I'm I'm Miss Mrs. Rupan. So <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so here's the thing. What happened to the crown? Just a sec. The crown is still with Rupan, I can see. The jet comes in. Rebecca and Rupan are still falling. Oh, okay, I can see it now. She, she took the crown out of the bag, I think. Because after that, when Zupan was falling, the bag, bag was kind of flopping in the air. So the crown was taken out of that. So did Rebecca do that while she was falling? I think so. Like while she was falling, she probably grabbed the crown and just jumped into the jet plane while Rupan fell down. And... Uh, yeah, the bag is flopping now. I don't think the crown is in there. I don't know. Yeah, the, the bag is completely floppy. And then Fujiko comes in. Fujiko's like, what the hell? The bag is empty. Like, you know, uh, like... <laughs> and yeah, then we see inside the jet plane. Um, Rebecca has the crown while Rupan has her glasses <laughs> and uh, yeah and like you know we can see that Rebecca's like now here I kind of guessed that the butler was also in on this and there you go like someone had to like you know steer the train uh, plane so that was the butler and he's like congratulations for fooling Rupan and she's like stop it it was a failure like and you know, I failed to trick him by the end of it but still it was fun and uh, here there's an interesting thing uh the butler asks her uh okay the butler says like all right it's like i'm we're going to put this back to where it should be the crown and he asks how long are you planning to keep doing doing things like this and she's like until i'm bored and here the change in expression it probably is something some kind of a backstory which we'll get to know i'm sure um so yeah now here's the thing would you continuously ask Rupan to give back her wedding gift now they did not show what it was and uh, wait did did she gift the ring was that the wedding gift she says like the wedding was fixed so i want my gift back oh yeah okay i answer so Fujio gave the wedding rings as a gift, which probably means they are, they have transmitters in it. So Rupan's ring has a transmitter in it. Fujiko's, uh, uh, Rebecca's ring has a transmitter in it as well. I think. Because yeah, that's definitely what she she would do. <laughs> Rupan's like, I should have made her sign the papers for divorce. And he's like, let's go find Rebecca fast. And again, Fujiko's like, I, all I want is my gift back. So I'm guessing 
the gift was the ring i'm not completely sure but i think it is but all right now zenigata comes in zenigata's like what the hell like can i you had another person in your group and <laughs> starts chasing him and then in the end we see a random dude i don't know who that was like you know just looking at the camera so probably a character who's getting going to get important in the future but anyways uh, let's see what episode two has in store so let's get started this is episode number two of rupan the third part four so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go <laughs> Okay, um, subtitles are different, I think. What the? Injecting something? Who is this? Who is this? Okay. San Marino's treasure. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh my god. What ha why did go Oh my god, Rupan's like Oh my god, I feel like I need to uh, find a better subtitles here. The subtitles here was also extremely odd. Yeah, I'll try to find better subtitles from the next episode onwards. <laughs> All right, the fake fantastic. Mauro Brozzi. Okay. Broccoli. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, is that Rebecca? <coughs> Please turn. My god, the subtitles are so wrong. All right. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, where is he? Okay, Goemon well, was kind of looking at that whole thing very seriously. <laughs> wow. <laughs> then he got that just. Technically, Rupan is here. Miss Rupan, you know. Mrs. Rupan. <laughs> Ricardo Mordin. Oh. Huh.
Okay. Yeah, Ruban is the one who. This voice actor. Oh wow. Okay, so yeah, this is what's happening. <laughs> oh wow, what's that? What the? Irrelevant. Ah. Yeah. Okay, what? Oh. Do okay, okay. That's what. Ah. Where have I heard this voice? This voice actor. The. Oh my god. Hmm. Yeah. Ah. Oh. So he okay okay that's what's okay. So they're stopping him from going and playing and blackmailing him. Ah. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but I think he wants to... I don't know, let's see. Hmm. Oh my god. Alright. That's not how we play chess. Oh my god. He's just... Okay. Who's in the toilet? Who is there? Oh, he is there. Yeah, I was thinking, why is he s s Oh. So, he thinks that they won't be able to win if he doesn't... Okay. Ah. So what does he want Rupan to do? Like take steal the roof? Yeah. Yeah, you're too drunk to do anything. What's happening? Hmm. Hmm.
Okay, yeah, yeah. What can she give us and he gives us in return? One minute. Okay, so what, how much does Rupan want? Three times, three million? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Everyone is good at Yeah. Not for inter with the other team. Nothing to do with it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lim has food. Oh. Jewel Company. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, there you go. There you have your reason. M I C. Wait, what is that? You can silver that. Oh. <laughs> okay. San Marino and uh, never cut around. Yep. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Oh, like we saw him being like very engrossed in the game. So. Wait, that's Rupan. That's Rupan. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, it's this guy. Oh my god. I wonder what's up. like. You know, why does he like take the drugs? Like, there you go. Oh no! I'm just checking. You know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice, thank you, Lupan, for telling that to him. Oh. <laughs> <Right. laughs> what the hell? He's also what? Wait, is that Rebecca? It wouldn't surprise me if it's Rebecca. Oh. 
Or maybe Fujiko. No, no, that's not Fujiko. That's either Rebecca or it's someone else. Ooh, come on. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yo, they were all coming in a wow. Yep, that guy. No, it, it, oh, this guy's. <laughs> Yep, all will go into the jail. <laughs> oh, he's trying, okay. So, does is he like someone who isn't able to play properly? That's why he takes. The tire? Are the tires also bulletproof? No. Wow, you should have done that. The tires are not bulletproof. But that guy on the motorbike. My God, it's a grenade. <laughs> oh my God, chicken. <laughs> yep, there he is. Okay, is this Rebecca? Or no? No, this is not Rebecca. Sorry about it. Oh, this is that guy, isn't it? In the previous episode, in the end? What? Wait a minute. Something's going on here. Oh, that's why he was deterioration of the right eye. Ah. Oh. Okay. And that was a lie, the thing that he said before. That was not the real reason. Ah. Uh. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay.
Okay, so who is that guy? Probably some big shot. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Ah. Oh, he's one. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so that's what's happening. All right, here we go. Free kick. Something else. Ah, wow. Okay, that's nice. Oh no! Come on! Uh, yeah! Yep! Okay, that was nice. Wow, okay, that was really good. Okay, so we didn't see Rebecca at all here. I don't understand why was she in the picture then? I was actually thinking the one from MI6 was Rebecca in disguise. Because I thought she would be involved because she was shown in this episode. But she was not involved. Or maybe she is involved, we just don't know. Okay, that's it. Yup. All right. So that was another good episode. I, I have to say uh, I like this episode a bit more than the previous one because this has such a nice little, you know, what can I say? Like nice little thing in by the end of it. Uh, so yeah. Now, okay. Here, first of all, one thing. Uh, let me know if there's any uh, like kind of better subtitles than this. Like. I feel like this, these subtitles were even a, a little bit more, I don't know, like, you know, weirder than the previous episode. So I, I myself will try to find some better subtitles because, yeah, like I, I, I had a little bit of problem trying to actually piece together what was happening, uh, like, you know, while reading the subtitles because the subtitles, what they were saying was completely different than what they were speaking. Since I am able to understand, you know, like, like, this is a problem, you know, when you are able to understand the things that they are speaking, like, if I knew nothing, like, if I didn't uh, understand any Japanese, I would have just read the thing and would have understood the story according to the subtitles. But since I am able to understand, like, you know, broken Japanese, it comes in my ears and I'm reading the subtitles and I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. What they're saying is not the same as what they're, like, you know, it's written. But... I wouldn't say it's completely different, but there were a lot of things that they kind of changed in the subtitles. Like, you know, like uh, that kind of thing. So I don't know, like, and I, I would prefer a little bit better subtitle. I'll, I'll try to find out. If you have any other, like, you know, sources, let me know. Uh, or I myself will try to find out some better subtitles from the upcoming episodes. Uh, but yeah, still, as I said, like, you know, since I'm able to understand Japanese a little bit, I had a little bit problem, but still it was not that much. I was able to understand what was happening by the end of it. The first part was a little bit confusing to me. I was like, what the hell is happening? Why are they they're watching football? Like, you know, them playing football and all and what's going on. So, yeah, but now I understand. By the end of it, I understand what was happening. So, now interesting thing here, I would say. 
this, I wouldn't say this is episodic, but it is episodic in a way, the story I can see. It's not completely episodic. They, they, I'm guessing they, they're like, you know, like the approach that they're taking here now is like the Detective Conan approach, where like, you know, the Detective Conan, it's not episodic, but still it's episodic in a way. Each episode has like a different story. But still, it's like, you know, going in the same direction. The characters involved are the same. Rebecca's here and all. So it's not episodic and episodic at the same time. Which is interesting because, you know, like, this is like a standalone story little. The next one will also be a standalone story. Just like how Detective Conan has standalone cases every episode. But the story in itself, like, you know, in the background, whatever's happening, the whole thing with the, uh, you know, the organization and, you know, the FBI, the CIA, what's happening in Detective Conan, that's all the same. You know that's still ongoing but ep every episode is like a standalone case this i'm guessing lupin from here onwards will also be kind of like that so okay i understand what what is going on here but all right so first of all uh, we see this guy his name is what's his name bro brosini or something <laughs> lupin called him broccoli <laughs> okay he's called uh, san marino's Treasure. What is his name? Just a sec. Um, San Marino's treasure. Uh, just a sec. Where is? I cannot find his name. Where is his name? Brozzi. Okay, now one thing I realized here, you know, after watching this part again, is like, you know, they were talking about the football match and all, and how Rupan was watching it, and Goemon was also there. Jigen is like, What? Why are you watching it? Are you like interested in football? And he's like, Oh no, I just like this guy. His, like, you know, his way of doing stuff is like a samurai. And I'm, it makes sense why Goemon was so interested in this. He realized what was happening. No, we kind of get a little like you know that scene where we see Goemon looking at Brozzi, and you know when he tries to shoot the goal, he was kind of struggling. You know, one of his eyes were closed, and Goemon was kind of looking at that, and uh, here, like now I understand what was happening. He probably realized that Brozzi was like you know one of his eyes was something going on. And that's why he was looking at that situation so closely and uh, yeah like that's why he was so like not so what do you call it so intently looking at the match because as you said he probably liked Brozzi as a player because he said like he like moved like a samurai but at the same time he probably realized like something was wrong uh, so yeah All right now one thing here I really don't understand what the hell was Rebecca's like you know role in this episode. So we see like in the uh, news or whatever they show Rebecca and Rosie. And uh, okay, what's written here? It's probably an it'll. Okay, Jigen is like, isn't this your friend from the TV? San Marino's pride meets the Adriatic Sea Spur. Oh, so she was just here to, I guess, like, you know, kind of, um, like, meet him because, you know, like, he's one of the, like, one of the best players while she's one of the best, you know, uh, so, yeah, that, okay, that's, that was her role, like, I really, like, you know, you know, this scene made me think that maybe she's involved in this whole thing, that's why I was thinking that the guy from MI6, I, I suspected him to be her in disguise, <laughs> because I was like, why else would they suddenly show her in the beginning of the episode? If she's not involved but she really was not involved in this and just came here to meet him okay now here's another kind of like you know kind of example of how the subtitles are a little bit different here rupan actually says like uh looking at her you know what let me check okay what rupan says is He says that uh, as always she's doing whatever the hell she wants to that's what he says but in the subtitles it's written seeing her like this she may look like a normal girl 
which I guess is kind of the same, but it's not the same, you know? Like these were actually kind of bothering me throughout this whole episode. Like the, the person was speaking something else while the subtitles were something completely different. Even though it meant the same by the end of it, still the subtitles were completely wrong, different. So that was actually, as I said, like, you know, since I can understand Japanese, it was really bothering me. And I wasn't able to pay proper attention. <laughs> if I didn't understand Japanese that much, I probably wouldn't have any problem with this. But <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to find better subtitles from next episode. Okay, so. <clears throat> now, yeah, we see that that was happening. Now, Goemon is just gone after that. And uh, yeah, so. Now we see Zenigata. That was Zenigata, wasn't it? Yeah, he was kind of uh, on the in the field with like you know on the, in the spectators place, and he was like, "I can smell Lupin here," you know. And <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, you're probably right because technically Mrs. Lupin was here. It was not Mr. Lupin, but Mrs. Lupin was here for a few moments ago, I think." So <laughs> Zenigata is right, you know, in a way. <laughs> oh my God. So, okay, now we get to see this guy here. His name is the guy in the VIP zone, uh, Ricardo Mondini, famous criminal, but also very passionate about football. So the police says like, don't try to like, you know, mess with him because these are actually people like, they're keeping an eye on as cops. And then the guy that's like, ah, I don't care. Like, I don't have like time for these small fishes. You know, my aim is a bigger one. It's Rupan. <laughs> Oh my god, that was funny. So, basically, the guy who was acting as a bodyguard to this Mondini guy, he was part of the MI6. Okay, you know what? Let me check. I, I really had no idea who the MI6 was. I have heard about it before, but I really had no idea. Uh, so, MI6 organization. Is there anything? MI6, Secret Intelligence Service, SIS, commonly known as MI6, is a foreign intelligence service of the UK. Okay, there you go. So wait, MI6 is from UK. FBI is from, where is FBI from? FBI, is it from France? No. No, what, what is, what is it? United States, okay, FBI, no, sorry, not France, sorry, what the hell am I saying? It's, uh, FBI is from US. And CIA is also from America, isn't it? Also United States, yeah. So CIA and FBI are from America, uh, while MI6 is from, or what is it? No, M16, or is it MI6? Wait a minute. M16, sorry, not MI6. Or do they call it MI6? I don't know. But either way, M16 is from UK. Okay, okay. Uh, all right now <clears throat> so yeah this guy is from the m i'm gonna call it m i or, was, or is it m16 i don't know no is it it is m i6 or okay this is confusing me anyways i'm gonna call it m i6 correct me if i'm wrong um so m i6 uh this guy is from that that organization and he is acting as a bodyguard to this guy Probably keeping an eye out on him, trying to find him, like you know, uh, like you know, find the proper time to grab him or capture him. <clears throat> okay, now he was also probably kind of like you know trying to find the time to actually get the clues and get the proof, which helped him out by the end because Rupan actually did the job for him by the end of it, and he was also able to get to his goal. So <laughs> I guess Rupan helped him out here, even without knowing. So, okay, that was that. Now, here we can see that um, mm. Rupan and Jigen are in like a diner or a bar and they're playing chess. And uh, Fujiko brought uh, Brozzi here and they talk about what was the problem. He is, you know, he's doping himself according to the you know the the what do you call it the reports and everything he the the guy mondini he has gotten his hands on that and uh, no wait just a sec 
Oh no 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 sorry sorry um Okay, mafioso's report. Sadly, every proof of doping has been handed to a mafia affiliate, a certain Mondini. Okay. Uh, okay, here the subtitles say that he's talking about that the photo was an edit. Okay, so... Oh, I think I understand it a lot better now. So basically, that photo was edited. He was not, like, you know, injecting him at that moment. It was an edited picture. But since he takes those drugs because of his eye, there would be, like, you know, proof of uh, these doping elements in his bloodstream, which would kind of prove this photo to be correct or, you know, to be true. So basically, the photo was fake. But the reports that came in was true because he did have those things but he was not doping himself he was just taking those drugs to improve his eyesight so this was what was happening so okay he was okay i understand it a lot better now so that's what was happening the photo was actually edited i think correct me if i'm wrong you know as i said like you know i i'm not quite sure but the subtitles are a little bit different but yeah okay Another thing, they say, your dad gladly helped us, you know, we can give him a call if you want. So the dad betrayed him or something. Probably like, you know, sold them because of money or something, sold the records and all to them. But anyways, he's in a trouble now. And he like, uh, Montini has clinical records and photographs. And what he's saying is like you know he's going to go to the media and like you know just use them these on them and like you know uh, prove that he is doping himself he's not going to do that if he doesn't like you know participate in the next match this is the final i think and uh, that was the thing so uh, brozy is here to ask rupan for his help now here's the thing there's a quite a few interesting thing that was kind of here which was really confusing at that moment but by the end of it it makes so much sense there were a lot of questions that popped out on my on my head at that moment number one which rupan also had the question why is brozy so like you know, just like you know just so much trying to uh get into the next match you know why is he so concerned about the next match you know like he could just not appear and everything will be fine you know that's number one number two what does mondini gain from this they're gonna these these two were the main questions that that's in my head now they did give us the answer by the end of it and rupan also had this question he probably guessed something was wrong uh, but he still you know like he was thinking about it and rupan like you know it's like all right rupan goes to just leaves and brosi was obviously like you know very annoyed he's like what the hell i told you my story and this is how you repay me and uh, yeah okay so then we kind of get a little scene of that mi6 guy you know like playing chess with the other guy and uh, now brosi is in the toilet rupan is also there and here brosi is kind of whining and like you know like he's drunk and all and uh, here rupan asks that question like why are you so much trying to get into the next match do you think you will team won't be able to win or something without you uh and uh, you know all these things he's talking about these are the questions that also i had in my head and here brosi comes in and it's like what the hell what do you know about me and uh, talks about how all he wants is women and money and that's why he's playing which was obviously a lie which we get to know in the end and uh, yeah and then again another question comes up which also i had it is if he really wants so much to like you know participate in the football game and everything is so passionate about this why was he doping himself you know? at that moment we did not know what was happening and you know why were there doping elements which we get to know by the end of it he himself tells what was the reason there was like you know these elements in his bloodstream uh, but that at that moment that was another viable question if he really is so passionate why is he doing this so these are all the questions i was kind of thinking about and uh, but this guy's like how what do you know about me tries to punch him falls down and at that moment we thought that was basically because he was drunk which we get to know by the end of it that's not the whole story oh so, yeah uh they come and rupan is like all right i'm going to take the you know, thing the job and 
And they're like, you are here for our services, so you must give us something back. And he's like, all right, I'll give you one million dollar or something, I think. Yeah, and Ruman is like, what the hell? Like, that won't do. Free. And at that moment, we thought it was three million he was asking for, but no, it was actually not that. Which is kind of nice. By the end of it, we actually get to know the whole story. Um, so yeah, now here Rupan starts his uh, investigation. He, he, we see him playing like a chess game. And uh, okay, now a few things we get to know here is uh, first of all, where is it? Zineng, uh, Jingan asks the important question. I can't understand why Montini would, what Montini would gain from this. The owner of Interroma, the other team is some sort of oil king who has nothing to do with Bors, Brosi. And the actual thing, um, where is it? The actual reason comes up here. Uh, he shows, wait, so one thing, <laughs> that chess match, was that like a secret password to get into the, like, you know, the MI6's database or something that Ruban was doing? I think it was something like that. Like, you know, you have to win the chess match, then you will be able to get in. Um, so, yeah, something like that, I guess. But anyways, um, he shows Jigen the actual reason why this Mondini guy is trying to win. You know, um, it was be because he was, he was uh, buying that team, the other team, I think. That's what they said. That's why they don't want to lose the final match. Because, you know, he, since he's buying it, there's a lot of money involved. And uh, that was the reason. So they kind of tracked down Mondini from the MI6 database. And uh, yeah, so the operation starts. Lupin goes to the, uh, their place and uh, knocks out the guy, the, the, the big guy. And uh, here, this was an interesting scene. The MI6 guy and Lupin was, play, was playing chess. Here, the MI6 guy probably realized that was Rupan in disguise or someone else in disguise because it seemed he was surprised because Rupan was playing probably a little bit well or something. Or maybe he was like, you know, who was winning the match? Okay, where is it? Okay, so <laughs> he did lose the match. But I feel like Ruban was actually playing very badly, which MI, the MI6 guy realized as he looked at him like, like that. And he realized that it was someone else. It was not the same guy before. So, but he still let him do his job because that job in itself was something he would benefit from by the end of it. Rupan's, whatever Rupan was trying to do. So, you know, he, 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 he actually doesn't say anything to him. Uh, Okay, so then we see Brosi you know, drinking and like, you know, kind of frustrated. And again, we see Rupan in the, the room, the safe, taking out the reports and everything. <laughs> Mundini comes and realizes what's happening. Rupan shows his face and breaks the uh, window, gets out of there. And uh, like they were involved trying to, like they were trying to get, capture Rupan while this MI6 guy, he comes in and grabs the other reports. <laughs> that he needed like as i said he realized it was someone else and he just let ruban do his job because that would make his job a lot easier and uh, yeah like the chase happens after that and as we see like kind of goemon does his job kind of destroys the signboard and the cars stop and uh, after that you know ruban okay now they're, they're like shooting the the tire is bullet not bulletproof unfortunately the they shoot the tire off and uh, this guy throws a grenade at them my god <laughs> jigen just shoots a grenade off it blows up on their faces and uh, mondini is there mondini's like what the hell and the mi6 guy comes in mondini's like come on let 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 me let kind of go with you we need to capture that guy and the guy just punches him <laughs> and here we get to know his original identity uh i think the mi6 guy and uh, yeah so then we see Rupan. uh what do you call it go to rossi and uh, 
like interesting he here says like you still haven't paid me which at, at least at that moment i thought he was talking about the money but then <laughs> we know what it actually is and that's why he was probably practicing you know so here we get the original information that his eyes uh has like an illness and he's losing eyes on his left or right eye or something like that and to slow down the illness he's like you know injecting drugs in him which resulted positive in anti-doping test so this basically means he's not doping himself but he's just trying to stop the eyesight from going away but unfortunately since the chemicals have like those things in it it resulted positive and he has to do this otherwise he loses his eyesight and here we get the uh, actual another reason why he was uh like you know so like you know, wanting to do this so much because he, the boss of that team was someone who picked him up and he wants to actually repay them back and uh, that's how why he wants to get involved in the final match and also win and uh, that was all the reason so that it was a very good reason you know it was not something shallow it was a very uh nice and very you know heartwarming reason you could say he just wanted to repay him back okay now the next scene is where we see like that Zenigata is in front of the police officer the police chief he's saying Mondini has disappeared and uh, like we get to see like the, the, you know, the guy the guy was involved in the MI6 and uh, <laughs> yeah okay so then in the end we see the match was happening and here we get to know Rupan asked him for three three goals nothing like you know, nothing no, no money or something he just asked him for three goals for a hat trick and here we go in the end you know he does the free kick even though it was like you know it was saved he had headed the ball and he won Rupan is like yep you kept your promise and that's all I need as a payment that was nice that was a really good episode so yeah so that's it guys thanks for watching um so this is a great start I'm, I'm really liking it and as i said i can understand it's not completely continuous it is episodic but at the same time it's continuous it's like detective conan the way detective conan does the episodes similar to that so yeah i'm, I'm fine this is, I'm, I'm happy with this you know uh like underlying there's like a main story going on the whole thing with rebecca and uh, rupan i think uh, while on the outside, like these type of things are going on. Rebecca will probably be a recurring character and uh, will probably have like a finale by the end of this season. So we'll see about that. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I love the animation and everything. It, it's so great. I love these new visuals and all. And uh, yeah, this, this, is, this is looking great. And I'm really looking forward to the upcoming episodes. So that's it. Thanks for watching. This was my reaction to episode number one and two of Rupan the Third, part four. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. And I'll try to find better subtitles from the next episode uh, video. Uh, I'll try to find it. I, I don't know if I'm, I'll be able to find it, but we'll see. But yeah, so see you guys next week with two more episodes of Rupan the Third. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.